and welcome to my channel. My name is Christina Moyer and today we're going to do a little paint night painting on a 16 by 20 for my mom's birthday and she doesn't like to be on camera so you won't see her on camera. She'll, she'll be the elusive painter but I will show you her finished product as well. Feel free to paint along with us and let's get started. All right, so this voiceover is going to serve as instruction, tips, all those kinds of things. So if you're interested in hearing those and following along, keep that volume on. And if you're not, you can just put on your own music and just watch it like a time lapse. I'm getting started by blocking out my picture. You can use pencil crayon, you can use pencil, you can use pastel. I like to use pastel because it kind of blends in, disappears easier. So if I use a pencil, you have to make sure you, the paint does cover it, which... Sometimes I paint pretty thin, so it doesn't work out for me. So pastel works because it just kind of blends in. You have to be careful which color you choose though, because I'm choosing blue because my sky is blue and it works with my color scheme. If you choose a color that doesn't work like a red and you're doing a blue sky, it's going to blend into your paint. So just keep, a, keep note of that. So I'm just using a regular canvas. I haven't done anything special to it. Um, like I said, I'm using chalk pastel, but you can use pencil or something else. This is a 10 or 12 size um, round tapered brush, and it's quite soft, and I really like to use it for my paint nights. It tapers off so you can use it sometimes for the whole painting. This painting, we're gonna use multiple different brushes, but to start out, we're using this one to just get that sky in. I started with white so that I can keep my sky really light and then added just a little bit of blue on the side and then start blending it in towards the other side. And now I'm just adding white because I want to keep that sky really light. The rest of the picture is pretty dark. I'm taking another brush and granted I should have used a larger brush if you have a larger rounded flat brush or something like that or even a blending type of mop brush you could use that to blend in so you don't have the lines showing. If you're just using a smaller brush you don't have a lot of choice just have a rag in your hand and even if you're using a mop brush whatever you're using you'll still want to do this technique where you brush really lightly back and forth and possibly in other directions as well, just to get those lines to disappear. I'm using barely any pressure at all. I'm barely touching my canvas, actually. It's just barely grazing it, going back and forth quickly. Uh, I have sped this up just because I know that you can rewind and, well, not rewind, but go back. <laughs> That's just aging me right now to say rewind. So you can go back if you need to, or pause the video just to to make sure you get all the information. I just didn't want it to be a slow, boring video. So that's why I've <laughs> doubled the speed. So now we're just using that same color. I haven't washed my brush. I'm keeping it light and just drawing out with the paintbrush my waterfall. So this is kind of where you're deciding how big it's gonna be, but at the same time, it's not final right now. And now I'm taking black and I'm still using the flow acrylics. So that just means they're already kind of watered down and you don't need to add any water to them. In fact, don't add any water to them if you're using a flow acrylic for this purpose anyways. And now I'm just using black. I don't typically just use black like this, but as it was a paint night type of scenario, I'm okay using black. I often will just use a mixture of blues and reds and and kind of make my own black um, to kind of just keep those colors in there because now if I just add white to it, it will just go gray. And if you had other colors in there and you add white to it, you'll make something a bit more interesting. But it works for this purpose and feel free to invest in other colors if you want or if you're using the flow acrylics and you try and mix red and blue, you're not gonna get a deep color. So that's why I'm doing it this way. Get right to the bottom and now we're just painting the rest of our image black. <laughs> and I was just making sure I could get to the bottom there. So that's why I moved my canvas. And again, I'm still using that. Um, it's a number 10 or number 12. Either one doesn't really matter. And in fact, you can use a different brush also. There's a lot of different brushes, just something that's larger that can cover the space quickly. And I just like that it has a taper. It gives me a little more control and it's a nice soft brush. So I don't, not really looking for texture at this point. So that's why it's good to have a soft, large brush that comes to a taper. It's really good multi-use brush. And I'm gonna go on the sides of my waterfall, 
do not paint your waterfall. <laughs> if you do, no big deal. You can always paint over. That's the beauty of acrylics. So if you did, you just have to have to let it dry and then paint over your waterfall again. No worries. We want to work while this is still wet to do the next bit. So next we're going to use a palette knife and I'm using a mixture of white and like a light gray, a warm gray. So it's almost kind of a creamy toned brown, like a really light brown gray color. And I'm just getting enough on my palette knife to kind of slide, glide it, probably is the better word, glide it along in the areas where I want some rock to show on the edge of this cliff. So there's some areas, if you were to look at the reference image, you would see that there's a rock area showing. This is mostly a foliage image with trees, um, with the waterfall, but there's also these rocks that give it another dimension that I really like. It's nice to have different levels of texture and you could use a brush, but I really love the effect that the palette knife has because it's gonna blend a little bit with the black underneath to create some shadows. And if you just kind of let the palette knife do its business when you're dr dragging it across or gliding it, it, it's going to do wonders for you. Don't press too hard and you can practice on in your sketchbook or something first if you're nervous about it, or you can just go for it and have fun with it and not put yourself under too much pressure. Cause these are supposed to be fun. This is a fun painting, a fun, quick type of painting, not, nothing to be overly labored or worried about. So now I'm adding some rocks at the bottom of the waterfall and when you're doing this also try and leave some areas black so that you do have those intense shadows uh, don't just wipe over the whole area and also try and think about the shape rather than i'm painting rocks because as soon as you think i'm painting rocks they're gonna look kind of goofy so imagine shape instead and i think it'd be helpful if i include the reference image here otherwise you're just going off of what I've created. Now, the problem with if you copy exactly what I'm doing is your palette knife is probably different than mine. Our brush strokes are different and you're going to be frustrated if you try to make it exactly like mine. So please have fun with it and let it come out the way it's supposed to. I think about it a little bit like having a conversation with my canvas. So you start to kind of see what it wants to do and kind of work with it and try and figure out how the palette knife is working and and how you want how you want the outcome to be and work with that like that does that make sense i hope so so there's a rock section at the base and i'm still using the same colors and and just adding little bits where there might be smaller rocks so just a little touch with the tip of the palette knife along the bottom where there might be just little bits of rock peeking through, hitting the light, touching up all the areas. And here I'm gonna just change it up a little bit and scrape it down. See, this is where you just need to have fun with it. Explore, experiment. You never know what's gonna happen. It might make it worse, but don't give up if it does. If you feel like you've made a mark worse, you can fix it and just go with the flow. Don't be stuck. Sometimes I'm working on a painting and I'm really liking where it's going. And then I kind of stop because I'm worried about ruining it. And actually I have a painting right now that I have that problem with, and you just got to go with it. You just got to try and, and work with the mistakes that you think are mistakes and see how they can actually benefit you. Just remember Bob Ross, happy little accidents. Sometimes you think they're a big mistake and they turn out to be what makes your painting so much better. Yeah, and I saw that it jutted up a little bit above the line. We don't want the top line to just be so linear at the end. We're going to have foliage coming up and around it, that kind of thing. So again, I'm just still playing around with this palette knife. Have fun with it. We're gonna have foliage that can cover some of it, so don't stress out too much. If you feel like yours don't look like rocks, maybe try you know, easing the pressure, try less is more, You know, think about where you're gonna place it before just going. It's like, 
I'm kind of contradicting myself. I'm saying go for it, but I'm also saying think it through before you make a mark. And you do want to have a balance of both. Otherwise, you're just going to have painted over top the whole black area and not have any of that shadow, which is a beautiful thing to have. We need those lights and shadows. So now I'm going to go in and give some different tones into my waterfall. So I'm taking some blue, some of that same blue I used at the top, which is just like a primary blue because it was that flow acrylic mixed in with some gray and white mixture that I used for the rocks. And I'm just creating some areas of shadow. Otherwise it will just look like a line down the center. It won't have a real effect of a waterfall. So you can already see it's created some depth. Okay. This part is really fun. Now we're getting into areas where there's some like moss type of foliage growing along the rocks. And for this, I'm using a raw sienna, just straight up raw sienna with a fan brush. If you've never tried a fan brush, I highly recommend it. It is so much fun. Fan brush. Oh yeah. So with a fan brush uh, and any brush, here's a little tip, make sure that you're not globbed on paint on the whole brush. And also paint will sometimes get closer to the part that's holding the brush together, like near the handle. So make sure you're not accumulating paint on that section. Otherwise you might, you know, with added pressure, create a blotched look of paint where you weren't meaning to do that. So keep your brush kind of clean, make sure you wipe it off on your palette just to kind of clean it up. And so in here, I'm just kind of adding in those areas where from the reference image, I can see these reddish brown areas. It's kind of like a moss growing on there, but also some of the highlights of the foliage looked similar to this color and it adds some warmth to it. Not just one color green type of thing, but this nice warmth and highlighting to it as well. So with the fan brush, you can use it different ways. Um, but for what I've just been doing, I've mostly been kind of dabbing a little bit onto the page very carefully and not with too much pressure. And you're going to see pretty quick that I'm going to be doing some trees on the right side that come above our cliff line. And what's cool about a fan brush is you can create these really straight lines and then they're really great for like a pine tree. So you're going to see right here, I'm going to do these lines. So carefully, this is a good one to practice in your sketchbook first, make a, a line, make sure you have enough paint on your brush. I should mention too, that when I started using this raw sienna, this is not the flow acrylics anymore. The further background flow acrylic is fine. Um, but when it comes to adding in the details and I want just to be a stronger, more concentrated, just better quality paint. These are just like a medium type of flow acrylic. So they're not, you might need to add some water. They're not going to be as thin. They're going to be a bit thicker when you squeeze it out. So just keep that in mind. And I'm using it more on the corner than I am on the center of the brush. And I'm dabbing in the areas where the branches will be. And at the very top, I dab very, very lightly, very lightly. And then as I go down the tree, I increase my pressure and I might even try part of the center. I flip around from corner to the other corner and move around so that the tree doesn't just look like I stamped a stamp all the way down. Move your hand around a little bit so that it looks like a real tree. And again, try not to think of tree, try to think of shape size, tones. Right now it's not really focused on tones since we're just dabbing on some raw sienna, but at the same time, we do want to consider how much of the black we're covering when we're coming downward. We don't want to have that super visible line coming across that diagonal line of black. So I am trying to blend some of my color to hide that. And then as I come downward, I'm not covering it as much so that I can have some of those shadows. Otherwise, why would we have painted it black? 
we want those shadows. So you can see again, I'm moving my hand around, twisting it around, and then as I come down, there's more pressure. Always good to start lighter and then increase pressure once you can see what your brush is doing. Make sure you're reapplying your paint frequently. You know, charging your brush once is not going to be enough. You can see how many times, and sometimes I've deleted and edited out how many times I actually go down and wipe my brush and prep it. And this area on the right had quite a bit of this raw sienna color, so I'm filling it in quite a bit. But again, I'm doing it slowly so I don't miss out on my nice shadows. Don't lose them. And let's throw in another little tree. That one needed a friend, I guess. <laughs> that trees need friends. <laughs> I guess so. And you could use, a, if you didn't have a fan brush, but you had a flat square brush type of thing, then you could use that. That would work pretty well as also if I didn't have a fan brush, that would be my next choice. That one I was using at the beginning, that tapered one, that wouldn't be so good. And then there, now there's some white highlights that I need to add in. So from the image, I couldn't quite tell if it was actually just background of the, the rock showing through, that may have been the case. So now I'm adding in, it's a medium yellow, kind of like a primary yellow, um, and mixing it into my, my sienna, my raw sienna in areas, which might still be wet. And if I want it to be dulled down a little bit, I can mix a little bit of brown or even a little bit of purple, because if you mix a little bit of the opposite color on the color wheel, you can dull down the color. Now, why would you want to dull down a color? It sounds crazy, right? Well, we might not want it to be so bold. If you use it straight from the tube, a color can be very bold. If you want it to be dulled down a bit so that it has more realistic look, depending on your image, then just blend it in with a color, another color. Anytime you blend a color, you're going to dull it down a bit. It won't be as brilliant, as strong of a hue. So keep that in mind when you're blending and mixing your colors. If you want it to stay bright and strong, don't mix it. Get it straight from the tube. And that goes, so if you're using pink or something like that or a purple, instead of mixing it, buy a color and then you can have it more brilliant if that's what you want. I often mix most of my colors, but sometimes I do want something to really be bright and bold. And that's when you need to buy the individual color, the exact color you need. And now it's really fun coming in, coming to life now that we're adding some highlighting as well. We had the low light already there with the, the black, added in that sienna as kind of a medium main tone. And then now we've got this, or hue, I guess I should say, <laughs> I don't know if I'm tones and hues at the moment, kind of both, and then highlighting with this yellow. On the left side, we have some yellow trees with some green in them, so they're gonna be lots of fun. So I'm just using the fan brush, but as I'm using it, I'm noticing that it's maybe not the best brush, but I'm just still going with it. <laughs> Sometimes I do that. I think, hmm, this isn't doing what I want it to. Maybe I should switch brushes. And then sometimes I just keep the same brush and try to challenge myself with it. So at the moment, that's what I'm doing. I'm keeping the same brush. And this one comes all the way up to the top of my canvas. And this is not a pine tree, some kind of deciduous tree on the left side, in case you're wondering <laughs> what kind of tree it is. I would probably have switched to my round stiff brush to do this which I think I will at some point. So I know I will, because this is a voiceover. <laughs> Adding a bit over top of some of these areas where the highlights are with the raw sienna will give it a little more pop. 
Now we're switching to green. So I'm using a couple different greens, keeping my yellow on my palette, as well as a dark brown, a raw umber to be specific. And the greens, I believe, are just... I don't know the exact names off my mind, but there are two greens. One is a darker kind of foresty green, and the other one is just a medium green. And I'm kind of mixing all of those together, sometimes with white, to create the greens in this image. You've got your yellows, you've got... Now for green, if you use it straight from the tube, you might have it way too bright and it doesn't look natural. Add a little bit of red or a little bit of brown and it'll help dull it down. Ooh, that rhymed. <laughs> so now I'm going in with some green and I, this is that dark green I mentioned and I believe I did mix it in with some of the medium green as well. Uh, but just see what you have and kind of work with it. I'm kind of adding some dimension into areas and more of the shadows that may have been lost as I was playing around with the raw sienna and the rocks. Sometimes you get a little too much. So now I've switched to my round brush. This is a stiffer bristled brush. So just because it's a stiff bristle doesn't actually mean it's not a good brush. It just depends what application you need it for. And for kind of a textured blotchy stamp, this kind of brush is really great. I really love to use this to create foliage on mass. So if you have lots of foliage to do and you're not wanting to paint every individual leaf, because that would just be crazy for this painting, <laughs> then this is the kind of brush you want to get. Something kind of more stiff. That first one I used would be way too soft for this kind of application. Those soft ones you can't really use on the point in this kind of way. This one is stronger. I can kind of use a stronger pressure. And I'm not always pressing really hard, especially if I have lots of paint on my brush. And if you press lightly, you can get nice little individual leaves showing. So there's some areas where if it's more concentrated, I'm kind of stamping it maybe a bit stronger. And then in other areas, nice and light so that I can keep those individual leaves kind of showing with the, see at the bottom, that was quite light. And you can see lots of the black showing behind. And that's what I wanted down there because it's quite shadowy and dark down there. And then in other areas, you, you'll notice that I kind of clump it together, cluster it. So it's a little bit stronger pressure. Or if you're worried about, you know, too much pressure and ruining it, because you definitely don't want to press too hard, then you just do lots of light little stamps. Stamp it on light multiple times, and that will cover the area as well. So right now I'm kind of focusing with it, the medium green mixed with a little bit of brown to keep it from getting too bright. I don't want it to look goofy. If it's goofy green, I guess could be. <laughs> this is more of a realistic piece. So that's why I want this to be like that. And also to kind of blend it with my background a little bit. I don't want it totally blended. I want my shadows to be somewhat obvious, but now I'm adding a bit of yellow for some highlighting. So yellow, you add a little yellow, add a little, uh, you don't even have to wash your brush necessarily because at this point I'm not looking for a stark yellow shift. I'm just looking to create some highlights and create depth in the piece. You can kind of see how my brush hovers over certain areas. That's when I'm thinking about, hmm, is that the right spot? And I'm visualizing and then I go for it. <laughs> it's kind of like the measure twice, cut once type of plan that I'm doing when I do that. Don't just go crazy and go for it. I do have thought process as I'm going. <laughs> Lots of thoughts happening and and hopefully still having fun too. So I noticed when I was doing this upper left area that it probably would have been more effective if I started with the darker colors and then went with yellow on top. So I will add yellow on top. So I've created myself and added another step for myself instead of 
doing it the way that would have made more sense, but I also already had yellow on my brush previously and thought it would be easier to just do it that way. So it's not a big deal in the end. <laughs> and when you're going through these areas, make sure that you kind of include the thought process of where you were placing your raw sienna. So in those areas where maybe it was a crack in the rock on the wall or it juts forward, there was some of that raw sienna and plants growing on it. So try to imagine your own world that you're creating when you're painting this, because it doesn't have to be exactly like mine or like the reference image. And I hope that you do feel like you have the freedom to move things or work with what you've started creating as sometimes you put something somewhere and it's not quite the same as the image so you're trying to fix it and it's and then it, you start to lose it and you start getting frustrated this happens to me too i sometimes make mistakes and then i'm trying to fix it and if you just push through and take a little break and focus on what you need to to do to fix it or what could happen to fix it, or get some advice. Find somebody who knows what they're talking about and, and see what do you think I could do to improve on this piece. So now I'm going back with the first brush that I used. So that's a nice tapered one, because in this front area, as we're getting closer to the, you know, you're in the foreground, there are some leaves that I wanna add a different type of texture to show that they're closer so I'm taking my bright yellow mixture, kind of like what I did with the trees above, but slightly more mixed with the green. So it's more of a light green and adding some in there. And now I'm taking some of the dark brown, so that's raw umber, and fixing little detailed parts that need some more shadow in them. So right at the base of the waterfall, we don't see where the water's splashing really, the rocks are kind of in the way. And then I was just really trying to fix this area on the right where the, the leaves are showing more. I was trying to see what was going on there. So I'm, I'm playing around with it. I don't want to do exactly every leaf how I see it. So what I realized is that I needed more shadow just underneath them. So you'll notice that I start to add some shadow using kind of the green mixed with the brown. So what I had on my palette mixed with the brown. And while I had that nice dark color, I'm putting in my tree trunk and some light branches that are barely there, but they're enough so that you know that it's real, because it's real, or gives the illusion that it's real. <laughs> that would be a good thing to practice on in your sketchbook as well. But if you made your line too strong or too thick at the top, take a clean brush, dampen it a little, just like that, and wipe it off a little bit. If you have ever done eyeliner and you've ever had to fix it with a Q-tip, then that's kind of the same thing, it's the same idea. So again, I'm just taking that, It's now it's a very light, when I say light, I should say watered down, so it's, it's more of a glaze. So a glaze is just kind of like a watered down paint so that it has more of a transparency to it. And I'm creating these just little low lights, shadows, using kind of a mixture of the brown and the green to create a nice warmth. It's almost like the raw sienna color, but it has that transparent look to it. So keep that in mind. And just fixing any little area that to me looks a little out of place. And that takes time to kind of learn what that is. And that's why taking an art class in person can be nice too, or, or something like through Skillshare so you can get feedback from your instructor. Or feel free if you want to message me on Instagram or you know share your piece there with me and you have, you have some questions, I'm happy to take a look and, and give you some advice. Clearly I needed a little more in there. <laughs> or 
We're getting close to the end here. Just a few more highlights. And then once we feel ready, we'll sign it. And if you did follow along with this piece, I hope you'll take a picture of it and share it with me. I'd love to see what you've created. Maybe you've changed the colors up. I'd love to see it. Whatever you decided to make. Maybe you really wanted to follow along exactly and, and it looks similar. Whatever you did, I'd love to see at KMOArtYYC on Instagram. Share link. Make sure you tag me in your story so I'll actually see it. If you just post it, I won't be able to see it. But you got to tag me in your stories. There we go. I'm, I'm Now I'm adding that more shadow underneath that part there. That's what was missing. Part of it is being observant and, and knowing what's, what's off, what's missing. What needs to be done to make it feel complete to you. And we don't want to forget that I needed to add more yellow highlights over top of that because of the way I added the green didn't blend very nicely. So that's why I'm adding some more yellow. Again, I'm thinking it through as I'm adding, I'm not just going crazy. Sometimes it's hard to stop <laughs> and then you keep going. But I felt like there's some little bits that needed to be added, some highlighting here and there. And with practice, you'll, you'll see what you like as well and what needs to be added to make it feel more complete and whole and just more joyful to, to see. Oh yes. So here again, I haven't added new colors onto my palette here. This is just a brighter green. So that means I haven't muddled it down with Brown and I'm mostly using the medium green almost exclusively, but mixed maybe just a little bit with the uh, darker green that I have on my palette and just getting some more of that highlight. We're just missing some foliage on that side. We need that kind of emerald bright green to really make it pop. And you could add flowers in here. You know, you could make some different colors. Change one aspect of it if you're not super confident. You know, throw in some some pink flowers somewhere, but change the trees to a different color at the top. Otherwise, I don't think the pink flowers will look so great with orange. Maybe some purple flowers or red flowers. Yellow, white. White would be nice. And make sure you're having fun with it. <laughs> We are reaching the end. Just last bits of lighter. So if I'm adding a little bit of yellow, and this is just that basically a lime green of what I've created through mixing my yellow, my light green and white. Just where that sun really hits the foliage, it makes it pop. If you look outside, you'll see on a sunny day, the way the sun hits some of the foliage, they almost have, like they're sparkling. Notice how I use my brush in this technique right here, creating these little sparkles in the foliage. I'm putting it on a bit of an angle, so it's not the tip perpendicular to it. It's on a bit of an angle that I'm touching. Don't forget to sign it. And voila. And here are the finished pieces. Took us a few hours, I think. Yeah, three hours. Pretty awesome. This is my mom's finished piece. Look at that. So if you see any FJ work out there, then you know. <laughs> and then here's my piece. There's my camo. Whew, that was not super fast, but I think it was pretty fun and we feel pretty accomplished. What do you think, Mom? I like them. She says she likes them. She might have a good spot for hers. Okay, it's time for 
the boys, even Charlie, who's sitting in front of the industrial fan, kind of at a distance, <laughs> to come and see. I'm not showing mom, mom doesn't want to be on the camera. So boys, come on. Well, you don't have to crucify us, but we want your, we want to see your reaction, so. <laughs> what do you think, Charlie? Oh, Do you like it? Yeah, we're kind of dying of heat in here. What do you think, Charlie? Dry fast. Right in your face. I want to see your reaction. Let's see. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> do you like it? Yeah. Could be better. Could be better. <laughs> okay, here's my dad. That's pretty. To his reaction. Yeah. So. Do you want to see the picture that it's from? Okay. Okay, I'll show you the picture that it's from after you take a look. You can go closer or stay far or whatever you want. Yeah. Really cool. These are a men of few words. Well, yes. The pictures say them all. Yeah, they're very nice. They're very pleasing to look at. Very soothing waterfall feel. What do you think, Charlie? Well, with the with the fan going, it almost sounds like there is a waterfall. Yeah. Oh, do you like to sit in front of the fan? Yeah, he does. Yeah, it's hot, isn't it? Yeah. Not even uh, drew him away from uh, chewing my shoes. <laughs>